The construction sector is months away from a collapse. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Got my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article from the ABC because it's essentially, it's essentially calls for the government, government stimulus, government bailout to save the construction industry in New South Wales in particular. But frankly, I'd say in much of the country. Seems to be that depending on who you talk to you know, in the game, you know, the amount of government work they have really affects how busy their business is at the moment. Construction is facing tough times, everyone. Sure, we've had a little uptick in building approvals, but they're still lower than where they were for a while. Dwelling unit numbers took a sharp, sharp dive. We'll have to see. We'll have to see where it all heads. I'd be surprised to see, you know, a sudden uptick in apartments in Brisbane. Particularly with the amount of overstock that is happening. And what's going to happen for returns on investment properties. I mean, more and more people are moving home. 30-year-olds are moving home to save money. You know, it's a different world, guys. We're heading a recession. Yeah. A lot of these property experts we're talking to or what reading, they might not remember the last recession. Particularly all the Facebook gurus, you know, who are advertising on them. So, the state government is concerned about the outlook for the construction sector when JobKeeper ends in September and current projects come to a close. It, see, then that's the thing. It's the future pipeline. You can be busy now when you're running a business. You've got to be thinking one, two quarters ahead. You've got to be getting out there, bringing more work in. It's that pipeline that has people worried. And it's it's interesting when you know, I've worked in businesses and start, other staff haven't even cared about the pipeline. And it, it, it worried me. <laughs> it worried me when I was an employee. Jobs in construction are a key focus for the New South Wales government as it moves to the pandemic recovery phase for the economy, with Treasurer Dominic Perotti insisting they were crucial to help the state out of the crisis. About 310,000 employ employers applied for the JobKeeper allowance for their workers, and almost 48,000 were in construction. That is more than any other sector. So construction is getting the biggest number of handouts or bailouts to keep them going. But my understanding was construction could generally keep working through this lockdown. They generally could keep working. What does that tell you? The cranes in Sydney mask the real situation, he said. The construction sites right across our city and state have played an important role in remaining open during the pandemic. But at the back end of it, we want to make sure that pipeline continues. And there you go. There you have it. It's the housing construction area that is cause for most concern for the government. And... Here it comes back again to property, everyone, to housing, to property. It's a tool the government uses, well, because it generates tax revenue through land taxes or through strata fee uh, or stamp duty fees. And they, that's why they bring people in uh, to the country to prop up the property sector. It also has a wealth effect because people feel more wealthy. You know, and housing is going to take a hit because overseas migration has pretty much stopped. Tourism has gone, so there's going to be more Airbnbs flooding the market. People are moving home to save money. People are going to cheaper accommodation. So rent's going to go down. So the return on these investment properties is going to take a hit. And we've only just seen the beginning of the, of the recession. John Oxley, who runs a home building company on the Sydney Northern Beaches, Sydney Beach Homes, said that for many, the phone isn't ringing and there's a shortage of work. Most of his employees are on JobKeeper. Instantly, we had enough work for just one person, so we had to stand people down, which was quite, quite traumatic for us, he said. But one project has seen his company through and his outlook is optimistic. We're actually feeling incredibly lucky just at this point in time that these contracts that have been promised to be signed soon that they will 
be really positive for us. So he's he's hoping. He's hoping. The poor guy is hoping. So he's got his staff on JobKeeper. Probably should have let him go. Probably doesn't need that many, to be honest. I mean, that's the harsh reality of entering a recession. Not every business is going to be saved. There has to be some creative destruction. It's part of business, guys. Part of being in a recession. You know, he's old enough. He should remember the last one. Or he could just be young and uh, lived outside a lot. <laughs> Residential housing construction was already in a period of decline before the pandemic. There were 49,000 dwellings approved in New South Wales over the 12 months in April. The figure was down from more than 70,000 in the previous 2018-2019 years. And if we bring up this chart, you can see the amount of foreign investment in housing and building approvals. A big chunk of them was foreign investors. A big chunk of those, a big chunk of foreign investment comes from China. I know you can get people saying, you know, particularly the, the well, there seems to be a large active group of people in Australia that are China fans. They really are. They just love them, some communism and some, you know, authoritarian rule, which is a little disturbing. But, you know, they'll tell you America invests more. And that's right, they do. But if you look at the number of approved applications and the total investment, you can see that more of the money from China is going into smaller properties, smaller units, whereas American is going to huge big projects like Wheatstone and things like that. What do you think is going to have a greater impact on the day-to-day -day living of the average Aussie? More competition for your housing stock or a huge project off the coast of WA? Just let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Just let me know what you think in the comments. For large building company, Rawson Homes, it has been a challenging period, but indicates, indicates what, sorry, but indications suggest a recovery. Why? In recent weeks, we've seen a substantial bounce back in activity, which gives us a bit of confidence, said General Manager of Sales, Doug Phillips. He puts that down to government stimulus at a federal and state level. Yeah, but that's only going to last six months. That stimulus is going to end at the end of the year if you're talking about home builder. And, you know, what's that? Maybe a couple of projects for each builder, if that. And, you know, will... Will these projects, will we suddenly see, will we suddenly see the pin pulled on some of these jobs, these home builder jobs, after September, when people are suddenly, job keeper disappears, when job seeker bonus disappears, when trading while insolvent gets reinstated for directors? Will we see some of these home builder projects take a hit? Will I be talking about, you know, house contracts cancelled at record levels? We'll see. At the top end of town, the sentiment is the same. I think we're seeing generally that whatever government invests, if the government invests the dollar, the private sector invests 5 to $10 next to it, said John Craffrey, the CEO of Sydney developer Aqualand. The company intends to build the next stage of the inner city Barangaroo project over the coming years. He said there's still confidence in the large-scale investments in New South Wales in the long term. It might pause for a bit during the pandemic, especially to see how things play out, particularly in terms of office requirements and residential needs, or even retail needs for that matter, he said, but I think the pause will be short-lived. Um, well, let, let, let's just you know bring something here. I've got the Property Council data room up, and we'll just jump back. We'll go to the data room, and we'll have a look. We'll have a look at what happened to office commercial property. What happened to commercial property during the last recession? Remember, this is the first recession we've had in 30 years. And I just love bringing up this chart because we can see the vacancy rate here spiking ever so clearly at the last recession. Over 20%, from 5% to over 20%. Right now, we're already sitting at 8%. So we're worse off than 5%. Right now, we are living in a modern world where you can work from home, where people are becoming adapt at working from home, where you can have, you know, telecommunications. How many of you had your first ever Zoom meeting? You know, let us know in the comments. I was talking to my neighbors next door. They don't want to commute anymore. I've got clients who don't want to commute anymore. They want to push for working from home. That has to have an impact on this demand. So why does he think it'll be short lived? Do you think it's just optimism and hope? Is that what's fueling this? Do you think the government can pull us out 
of a big hit to construction in a couple of months? Or will it collapse? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Are you working in the game? How are you finding it? What's the pipeline like? Yeah, If you're working for a builder, if you're working for someone else, do you know what the pipeline is like? As always, please let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us via our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay or Independent Reserve and KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, Pocket Squares, you can see right behind me. You can use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you next time.